What's an NSFW fact about history that we don't get to hear too often? Roman troops were provided cow intestines condoms, as STD epidemics could decide the fate of entire wars. All the documentaries you see about hieroglyphs in ancient Egypt neatly avoid showing you the fertility rites, where the pharaoh's phallus is inseminating the land. Edit. This is my most upvoted comment on Reddit ever and the stack of awards was totally unexpected. It's not that they have any material value. It does show a measure of appreciation and I am humbled by your kindness. Thank you very much all you wonderful people. There is a legal penis size in Iceland. It's an old law from the Middle Ages after a woman was married off to a man and on her wedding night was so disappointed with how small his penis was that she took him back to the church to have an annulment. Because of her a law was made that a man must be at least 3 inches while hard to marry. There is a wonderful documentary called, The Final Member, in which this is an actual problem. There is a carving on the side of the belfry in Ghent that depicts a man suckling the breast of a woman. The story is that the man was condemned to die unless he could prove his innocence by surviving imprisonment without food for 40 days. He could have visitors during his imprisonment but they of course were checked for food. His daughter visited him every day. She was a wet nurse. He was let go after 40 days having survived. In ancient Egypt, soldiers proved their battle prowess by presenting the severed penises of their slaughtered enemies. Traditionally, severed hands were presented. But in 1182 B.C., Libyans and other allies invaded Egypt and were defeated by the army of Ramesses III, and Ramesses suspected that some soldiers were claiming extra credit by presenting the hands of women as well as the male soldiers, so he demanded penises instead. His victory inscriptions mention 12, 535 foreskins and hands, and has images of the piles of the body parts at the Medine Habu Mortuary Temple. The dildo was created almost 1,500 years before the wheel. Pope John XII was interesting. He became Pope in 955. His high points are, turned the sacred palace into a warhouse, fornicated with, among others, his father's concubine, various widows and even his own niece, castrated and then murdered a cardinal, blinded and then murdered his confessor, took payment for ordaining bishops and even ordained a 10-year-old boy as a bishop, ordained a deacon in a stable, refused to make the sign of the cross toasted the devil, invoked the names of pagan gods while playing dice and when he lost, used money from the papal treasury to pay off his debts. Granted, he was a teenager when he became pope, thanks to his dad buying the office, but still. In line with some of the other horrible stories here, when the Roman statesman Sejanus, the emperor Tiberius, right-hand man, fell from grace and was executed, the Roman people were eager to take their revenge on his family as well for all the tyranny he had put them through, so they decided to kill his young son and daughter as well. There was no real issue about killing the boy, but when it came to the young girl there was a sudden outcry. It was against all precedent to execute an innocent young girl, and above that, deeply impious to put to death a virgin maid, so they had the executioner rape her first. Mary Toft put baby rabbits in her angina and then pretended to give birth to them to confuse doctors. The actual death of Ratcliffe, you know, the oddly proportioned villain from Pocahontas, from the Encyclopedia Virginia, the colonists, led by Captain John Ratcliffe, walked into an ambush, about 33 men, or two-thirds of their number, were killed. The Indians captured Ratcliffe, and their women skinned him alive using mussel shells. Ferdinand VII of Spain had a huge dong, so much in fact that it's rumored that one of his wives died of a hemorrhage derived from having sex with the monarch. He almost died without a heir BC he couldn't have sex with the queen consorts without any damage. He only had a daughter, and he had to go through hell to change some old laws that prevented his daughter from reigning. Edit. Adding info. Edit 2. They designed a cushion thing for him to try to e6. Edit 3. He was suffering from genital hypertrophy. Sorry for any grammar or spelling mistakes. English is not my first language. At the Temple of Aphrodite in Cyprus, overlooking the legendary birthplace of Aphrodite, young virgin girls would tie a bowstring around their head and await a man to come along and throw a silver coin of any value into their lap. The man would say, I demand thee in the name of the goddess. The girl then had to have six with the man. In this way the girl would make her first fruit offering to Aphrodite. It is said that some girls had to come back for many days before they were chosen. In 1488 an Italian noblewoman Caterina Sforza Riario locked herself in a castle to save herself from her enemies. Her enemies managed to capture her children and threatened to kill TGEM if she wouldn't surrender. She climbed on ramparts, lifted her skirt to expose her female parts and shouted, Fools, don't you see that I can make myself more children? In colonial America a guy was arrested and charged because he drew a lewd image of his wife in the snow. Puritans didn't appreciate the art. Astronomer here, in 1992, 
Two astronauts did not disclose they were married to NASA until it was too late to replace one of them and thus became the first married couple in space. While the two astronauts in question are not the kiss and tell types, most people assume this means Space 6 has happened. Obviously you don't have to be married to try it, but it does make it harder to figure out the couples. NASA's official stance is that it hasn't, but I'm not sure people really believe them. The CIA once considered sending the Soviets condoms that were large labeled, small, to convince them that the US was well endowed. Source. Archive. Total frat moo. Com. CIA once considered convincing the Soviets that all Americans had huge dongs. Edit. Typo. King Tut's first wife was his half-sister, but she also may have been his full sister and even at one point may have been his stepmother. Read about Captain Cook. He. Discovered. Hawaii. They docked offshore right at harvest time. The natives thought they were fertility gods and sent their women in canoes to the ship. The crew had a blast year after year, until the natives figured out what was happening. In Pisa on St. Catherine's Day, students would search for and capture the fattest Jew they could find and demand a ransom of his weight in sweets. Source. The Great Mortality. John Kelly. Witches were more often mutilated than actually burned. There was a guy that tried to prove that yellow fever wasn't contagious and so he would pour the infected vomit into his freshly cut opened wood, pouring it into his eyes, and drinking it, and soaking into a bath of it, and smearing his body with blood, piss, and spit. He was fine because yellow fever isn't spread through direct contact, it's spread through mosquitoes, so he did all that for nothing. His name was Stubbins Firth look it up. A lot of people banged in the White House on the day of Andrew Jackson's inauguration. French modern philosopher Michel Foucault, in addition to studying crime and deviance in a criminology sense, also applied his theories on punishment to his fascination with BDSM, having also written a number of kink-based works. He eventually moved to San Francisco and partook in gay bathhouses, notorious for casual sex. He eventually caught HIV and some have speculated, it may be written somewhere, that he purposely contracted it as some sort of poetic social commentary. Oddly. I learned this stuff while getting my administration of justice major in studying corrections. LOL. In ancient Egypt they held a fertility festival each year and at this festival it was the pharaoh's responsibility to strip down and jerk off into the Nile. Edit. Should also mention that once the pharaoh had finished men in the crowd were encouraged to step forward and join in. So once a year the Nile River literally tuned into a massive public circle jerk. The deadliest female serial killer in U.S. history had murdered 35 people with an axe by the time she was 18 years old. How about the time that NASA funded a study about dolphin communication that ended with one researcher giving a dolphin that was high on LSD a handjob? The Guardian. Com. Environment. The 8th of June 2014. The Dolphin Who Loved Me. In 1511 a bunch of people in Brussels took part in the building of 110 vulgar snowmen as an act of protest. Edit. It's known as the miracle of 1511 if you want to know more. Romans loved depicting sexual acts on many everyday items, like oil lamps, combs, bowls, etc. You often see images of people frocking, like porn but in daily life. During wartime some armies would wipe sit on their spears so that when they stabbed, slashed enemies they'd get that extra poison damage. You know that one psychologist guy, Freud. Well one time he was tasked with finding the testicles of an eel, so he got literally hundreds of eels so he could find their balls. Nowadays we know eels have retractable testicles, but Freud didn't know that, so he cut up hundreds of eels looking for their testicles. Slave owners in the US had a health official who would lick slaves to see if their health was of good standing. Pope Alexander VI might have held orgies where he kept track of men's orgasms while he held the position of Pope and also definitely had an infidelity fetish especially with women whose wedding he'd officiated. He had four kids with one married noblewoman, and at least another three to five outside of that. The Romans would often include bestiality as half-time shows for their gladiator matches with strange animals up to and including swans. The Assyrians decapitated their enemies and had their heads watch them rape their wives. Edit. Vocab. Mozart wrote a piece called, Lick My Ass. Edit. As many people pointed out, the literal translation is, Lick me in the ass. And it means, Kiss my ass. And thank you to the people who deemed this information worthy of an award. When Catherine Howard, the fifth wife of Henry VIII was taken from Sion Abbey to the Tower of London to prepare for her execution, she sailed in a barge down the River Thames. She passed under London Bridge, where the severed heads of her alleged lovers Thomas Culpepper and Francis Derham were waiting for her displayed on spikes, rotting and picked at by birds. It was believed Edward II of England was murdered by a red-hot poker up his ass. 
ways popes have died. Pope John VII was bludgeoned to death by the husband of his mistress when he caught them in flagranti delicto. John XIII met his end, so to speak, when a cuckolded husband rammed a poker up his bottom. Pope Leo VII suffered a fatal heart attack during six with a page boy. In the 1880s, James Jameson, heir to the vast Jameson Irish whiskey fortune, purchased a 10-year-old African girl just so he could draw her being eaten by cannibals. This thread is half fun silly things, and half horrible atrocities. What a freaking roller coaster man. There are disputed claims that both Napoleon I's and Rasputin's members were, well, dismembered, during their respective autopsies and have traveled the world extensively, possibly farther than either men ever did as well as being shown in multiple occasions to the public. On a similar note, it is well known LBJ had a massive Johnson, and Rasputin's girthy schlong was venerated amongst high-class women of his time. No wonder he's indeed Russia's greatest love machine. I've read so much about Lyndon B. Johnson's as cock on Reddit it's unreal. The author of Frankenstein lost her virginity on top of her mum's grave. Victor Hugo, the guy who wrote, among other things, Les Miserables and the Hunchback of Notre Dame, was a six addict. He claimed he and his wife had six nine times on their wedding night. When she got bored with this, and I don't blame her for that, it just all sounds way too much. He proceeded to go and bang everyone and everything that caught his eye. When he died the brothels in Paris were closed down for the day so all the prostitutes could go and pay their respects to him. Fittingly, Paris apparently experienced a mini baby boom nine months after his funeral, which two million people attended. Mozart was into scat humor, like a lot. Benjamin Franklin had a fart fetish. There are letters that prove this where he writes to a woman about her flatulence. Catherine the Great had a lot of phallic furniture. Edit. Spelling fail. A French president died from a blowthrop. Edit. Well, he had a heart attack while getting a blowthrop. But the way I said it first sounded more funny in my head. The can can dance was considered very scandalous and obscene because it required high kicks and women of that time wore pantalettes which had an open crotch. According to records, King Jijung of the Sheila Kingdom had an 18-inch dig. Edit. I think the focus should be that they wrote it down as such, not that he actually had one, which sounds greatly exaggerated. Flix Foray. The French president in 1899 died in Lelis while being with a prostitute. Georgios Karaiskakis. Greek general during the Greek War of Independence, was at one point arrested by the Ottomans and asked to surrender. Karaiskakis was known for swearing a lot. His response was, I asked my d asterisk asterisk k and it told me no, not to surrender. Sparta is a treasure trove for this kind of thing. Sparta's marriage rituals involved the kidnapping of a girl then dressing them in men's clothing and shaving their head so they looked like a man before having sex with them. In the 50s the KGB tried to blackmail the Indonesian president by getting him to come to Moscow, where a bunch of girls got him to have six with them. When the KGB showed him the video he asked for extra copies, saying the Indonesian people would be proud. Edit. This is the first comment I've ever made to get 5k karma. I really thought I might have been too late but it really blew up. Thank you all so much for the karma and awards. Kind strangers. Edgar Allan Poe married his 13-year-old cousin when he was 27. Oh man, do I have a book suggestion for you. Amazon.com Underground Education Unauthorized Outrageous Supplement DP 03854837667 All the best NSFW facts from arts and business to six and medicine. One of my favorite pieces is on Mark Twain's defense of small penises when invited to a big dig boat cruise. There are pieces on erotic church art used to increase attendance. There is the history of women's underwear. It has it all and it is great for dinner parties. But some of the facts are so out there people will doubt what you are saying. Personally, this book has lead to several expeditions to the Library of Congress. I can't suggest the book enough. Edit. Added more context and stories. It is speculated that the crotches part of the armor, codpiece, was enlarged. Not to make the knights and king's junk look bigger, but to alleviate the pain caused by syphilis when their genitals made contact with the metal pieces. In the 1880s and 1890s, the French doctor Brown Seckward claimed to have successfully treated a number of diseases, including neurological complications of syphilis, by injecting testicle juice under the skin. Not NSFW but James Buchanan, US president, never cohabitated with his wife. And after his death several love letters were found that he had written to his assumed lifelong male partner. In the 19th century women were prescribed cocaine tampons to relieve pain from menstrual cramps. 
the Roman Empire drove extinct a plant that was a natural contraceptive. Its triangular leaves inspired the modern Valentine's Day heart shape. During the rape of Nanking there were accounts of Japanese troops forcing families to commit incestuous acts. Sons were forced to rape their mothers, and fathers were forced to rape their daughters. History would be everyone's favorite subject in school if the books focused on the things mentioned in this thread. A Nazi doctor injected blue dye into the eyes of hundreds of Jewish people in an effort to make them Aryan. He blinded many many people. Genghis Khan's generals, Jeeb and Subutai, after defeating the Russians laid thousands of them bound and stacked like cordwood, and built a platform above where he and his generals feasted, all the while the men below suffocated and were crushed to death. Source. Dan Carlin's excellent The Wrath of the Khan series. Edit. It was the generals. Always always blame the generals. Everyone thinks of red hair as a Scottish thing. There was no red hair there until the Vikings invaded in. Until it became a dominant local trait. Genghis Khan killed 10% of the world's population in his day and had so much six that 2% of people today are related to him. Romans would rape the defeated army. Anne Frank's diary was censored for her privacy. She wrote many entries about masturbation and her bisexuality. Her father cut those out. The Japanese were not only brutal occupiers when it came to other military-aged men. They would take on comfort women and pass said women around whole squads of soldiers and they would perform unthinkable acts on these women. People have been drawing stupid stuff in digs on buildings since the dawn of time. The Colosseum has digs drawn on it from around when it was built. King Louis XIV had a labor fetish. He liked to watch his wife and his mistresses give birth. He got frustrated because the laboring chair obscured the view so he started the whole flat on your back. Legs in the air position. Lyndon B. Johnson was quite a vulgar president. He has been reported to have carried meetings into the restroom if he had to use the restroom during the meeting. He also referred to his Johnson as Jumbo and you can easily find recordings of him making a phone call to a tailor requesting his pants be made with extra room in the area. Edit. Change the wording. Auschwitz had a brothel forced six house. Tales from the servyors who worked. There say sometimes the guards visitors given the honor allowed to use the facility would often just want to cuddle. Correcting to better reflect comments. The Japanese soldiers who are sent across Asia used to round up able-bodied Chinese men to shoot and kill in an effort to stop the Chinese from revolting and to prove that they were superior to the Chinese. Most of the people who are killed in the colonies were Chinese. All to prove they were superior in fact. Their methods were so brutal that literal Nazis told them that they were going overkill. During World War I, soldiers would avoid going into the trenches by purposefully catching STIs to be discharged. They would even give them to each other to help each other out. Napoleon's penis was sold at an auction house as small shrumpled object. Mozart was obsessed with poop. He wrote at least 39 letters which mentioned something about poop, usually letters to his family, including his parents, sister, and cousin. He also wrote a few musical pieces about it, including the infamous, Lech mich I am Arsch, in English, Lick me in the ass. Some of this is disputed by Mozart scholars, but typically it's because they don't want Mozart's legacy to be tainted by his love for sit. There's a whole Wikipedia page about it. Selim II, an Ottoman Sultan, died on 15 December 1574, aged 50, in Royal Palace, Top Copy Palace, while chasing women. He slipped while running and hit his head to the marble floor. There was a Russian scientist by the name of LLIA Ivanov attempted to make a human-chimpanzee hybrid he even went as far as secretly inseminating African women but there were consequences and led to nothing. Simone de Beauvoir was a French feminist author, professor, and Jean-Paul Sartre's kind of girlfriend. She was fired from her job in 1943 for abuse of minors. She had been seducing her underage female students for them to sleep with her and with Sartre, who had an appetite for virgins, and they wrote to each other making fun of these girls. Edit. I am happy to see a lot of people asking for sources and providing nuance in the comments. Do not hesitate to check them out. I answered some of them. You know when we say, how's it going? As a general phrase to inquire about a person's health, well that comes from the French. Comment a les vous, which was a phrase asked by doctors around the Renaissance period to inquire about how you are sitting, how are you going to the toilet, is what was meant, because at the time one of the ways to have precise information about someone's health was to have a look-see at his bowels. I find it funny that it has become this everyday phrase that is said all around the world. At the time, hearing someone answer, not so well, could be that guy's last words. King James. 
Ya No, like the Bible, had a gay lover who he was absolutely obsessed with. He gave him multiple promotions in status and had a secret passage that connected their chambers. Moats around fortifications and castles were absolutely filled with piss and sit. Normally the towers of the castles had holes that dropped the waste directly into the moat, and also moats did not always have drainage or flow. The worst part is that people would drink directly from the moats if they didn't have other options. Saw one Catherine Howard fact. So here is another. On the night before her execution, she practiced laying her head on the executioner's block. Not only for minutes, but for hours. I always feel very bad for her. Sarah. Sally. Hemings was an enslaved woman of mixed race owned by President Thomas Jefferson. Multiple lines of evidence indicate that Jefferson had a long-term sexual relationship with Hemings, and historians now broadly agree that he was the father of her six children. Hemings was a half-sister of Jefferson's wife, Martha Jefferson. Edit, long-term sexual relationship means raped. NASA tried to teach dolphins English and during the experiment they not only gave dolphins LSD, but a female scientist jacked off a male dolphin to relieve him so they didn't need to take breaks. Nero the Roman emperor killed his wife, found a slave boy that looked similar to his wife, castrated him, then made him his wife. That during the United States Civil War, the camps of soldiers were followed by camps of prostitutes, and let's just say that treating STDs got a lot more pleasant over the years. Chibata was invented in 1982. JFK had a sister who their parents considered too unruly. She partied, had casual sexual encounters, etc. She basically did all the things every male Kennedy had ever done, so they lobotomized her and left her to die alone in a mental asylum. I'll be arriving in Paris tomorrow evening. Don't wash. Apparently Napoleon loved smelly pussies. Like loved them. In the mid-1800s. Large American cities had thousands of horses in them for transportation, but no street cleaning. Each horse could produce 22 pounds of manure per day. Needless to say, there were piles of horse manure all throughout cities that were feet high and they just left it there to be washed away by the rain or eaten by hogs. Oh. And when the horses died, they just left the body where it fell. Apollo 12 flight book had porn taped into the pages. The backup astronauts wanted to prank the crew. They found it while going through the procedures while on the lunar surface and has a good laugh. In 1672 Dutch people ate their prime minister. Per accounts from Christopher Columbus men, he would have the hands of indigenous children cut off, tied together and placed around their necks where they had to wear it as they rotted or be killed. This was not taught in school. How about the fact that Pocahontas was like 9, or that Christopher Columbus sold 9 to 14 year old girls as 6 slaves? 